ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चेव नरोत्तम देव सरस्वत व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्रायशु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट की कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नमः हरे कृष्णा डियर डिबोटीज वेलकम फॉर दी डेली भागवतम रीडिंग क्लास I'll just share the screen with you all. I'm sorry, just give me one second more to go. We are at the fifth chapter, fifteenth shloka. Oh, this is a very wonderful shloka. Narayana Paraveda Deva Narayana Angaja Narayana Paraloka Narayana Paramakha. Sushir Prabhu, please read the translation and purport both. Hare Krishna Mataji, I am not getting the screen, Mataji. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I beg apologies. I beg apologies, Prabhu. I didn't share only the screen. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So this is the shloka, Narayana Paraveda, Narayana Paramanga, Narayana Paraloka, Narayana Paramakaha. 2.5.15. So now we'll read the translation. I beg apologies, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. The Vedic literatures are made by and are meant for the Supreme Lord. The demigods are also meant for serving the Lord as part of his body. The different planets are also meant for the sake of the Lord and different sacrifices are performed just to please him. Purport. According to the Vedanta Sutras, Shasta unit what the Supreme Lord is author of all revealed scriptures and all revealed scriptures are knowing are for knowing the Supreme Lord. Veda means knowledge that leads to the Lord. The Vedas are made just to revive the forgotten consciousness of the conditioned souls, and any literature not meant for reviving God consciousness is rejected at once by the Narayana Para devotees. Such deluding books of knowledge, not having Narayana as their aim, are not at all knowledge, but are the playgrounds for cows who are interested in, in the, reject, the rejected refuse of the world. Any book of Hare Krishna. Yeah. You got this screen. Any, any book of knowledge, science or arts, must lead to the knowledge of Narayana, otherwise it must be rejected. That is the way of advancement of knowledge. The supreme worshipful deity is Narayana. The demigods are recommended secondarily for worship in relation to Narayana because the demigods are assisting hands in the management of the universal affairs. As the officers of a kingdom are respected due to their relation to the king, the demigods are worshipped due to their relation to the Lord. Without the Lord's relation, worship of the demigods is unauthorized. Avidi Purvakam, just as it is improper to water the leaves and branches of a tree without wearing, watering its root. Therefore, the demigods are also dependent on Narayana. 
the locas or different planets are attract attractive because they have different varieties of life and bliss partially representing the Satchidananda Vigra. Everyone wants the eternal life of bliss and knowledge. In the material world, such eternal life of bliss and knowledge is progressively realized in the upper planets. But after reaching there, one is inclined to achieve further progress along the path back to Godhead. Duration of life with a proportional quantity of bliss and knowledge may be increased from one planet to another. One can increase the duration of life to thousands and hundreds of thousands of years in different planets, but nowhere is there eternal life. But one who can reach the highest planet, that of Brahma, can aspire to reach the planets in the spiritual sky, where life is eternal. Therefore, the progressive journey from one planet to another culminates in reaching the supreme planet of the Lord, Madhama, where life is eternal and full of bliss and knowledge. All different kinds of <clears throat> sacrifices are performed just to satisfy Lord Narayana with a view to reach him. And the best sacrifice recommended in this age of Kali is Sankirtana Yagna, the mainstay of the devotional service of a Narana Pura devotee. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, in this particular shloka, um, uh, 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 Brahma is answering to the second question uh, asked uh, by uh, Narad Muni. So, Narad Muni had asked, Yad Adhishtam. So, who is the shelter or the Adhar Shakti? And also he is answering to the fifth question, which he says, Yat Param, what it depends on. So what is the shelter and dependence of the universe? So the, the shelter and dependence of the universe, Lord Narayan is the shelter. And whatever you see in this universe, that is worth taking shelter of. So uh, if you think that the Vedas give the shelter, or if you think that the Vedas are ultimate shelter of life. He's saying that understand that Lord Narayan is the shelter of the Vedas. Or if you think uh, the Devatas are the ultimate shelter, then understand that the Devatas are just the limbs of Lord Narayan's body. And if you think that all these 14 planetary systems, they are the shelter of, the, uh, of all living entities, then uh, uh, Nar uh, Narad, Narad Muni, you understand that these planets, uh, uh, for these planets, only Narayan is the shelter of all uh, these planets. And if you think that by performing all these various kinds of sacrifices, uh, that is the source of my shelter, then uh, you understand that all these sacrifices are dependent on Narayana. So that is why this word para, you know, has uh, two meanings. Para means uh, shelter also. So if you see over here, so is the cause and meant for and uh, the, for the sake of, okay, just to please him. So para has two meanings. One is shelter and the second is the cause. So Narayana Paraveda will also mean that uh, Narayan is the cause of the Vedas. He is the cause of the Vedas in three ways. How? So from the breathing of Narayana, all the Vedas come out. And what is the purpose of the Vedas? Krishna himself says in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, 15th chapter, 15th shloka. What is that shloka? Uh, Sarvashyam riti sanvishto matta smitar jnana apohanam cha. Vedesh Sarvera Aham Eva Vedya. So the purpose of the Vedas is to know Narayan. So the cause of the Vedas is Narayan. And if Narayan himself is only not there, then there is no utility of the Vedas then. So if Narayan is there and if the Vedas are created by him, the purpose is to know Narayan. So if Narayan uh, uh, you know, would not have existed, the Vedas also would have not been created. So he is the shelter of the Vedas. So this is actually what uh, is being said 
in this particular shloka that is the 15 shloka now the next shloka is also a little connecting shloka only narayana para yogo narayanam param tapa narayanam param gyanam narayana paragata ruba mata ji is there no, she is not joined today priyanka please read the translation and purport both yes mata ji hari krishna uh, translation all different types of meditation or mysticism are means for realizing Narayana. All austerities are aimed at achieving Narayana. Culture of transcendental knowledge is for getting a glimpse of Narayana and ultimately salvation is entering the kingdom of Narayana. Purport, in meditation, there are two systems of yoga, yoga namely Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga is cut from all engagements by the regulative process of meditation, concentration, setting postures, blocking the movements of the internal circulation of air, etc. Sankhya Yoga is meant to distinguish the truth from ephemerals. But, uh, but ultimately, both systems are meant for realizing the impersonal Brahman, which is but a partial your voice is not clear maybe net ka problem hai. you'll have to sit in some place where you get net access Awaaz cut oh, hai. is it fine now haan, haan. um as we have explained before, the impersonal Brahman effulgence is only a part of the personality of Godhead. Impersonal Brahman is situated on the person of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as such, Brahman is the glorification of the personality of the Godhead. This is confirmed both in the Bhagavad Gita and in the Matsya Purana. Gati refers to the ultimate destination or the last word in liberation. Oneness with the impersonal Brahma Jyoti is not ultimate liberation. Superior to that is the sublime association of the personality of Godhead in one of the innumerable spiritual planets in the Vaikuntha sky. Therefore, the conclusion is that Narayana or the personality of Godhead is the ultimate destination for all kinds of yoga systems as well as all kinds of liberations. Thank you, Madhav. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. So, uh, he's saying that, so if you think by taking shelter of karma yoga, gyan yoga, uh, you know, all these processes that is going to give you shelter, then uh, please understand that Lord Narayana is the shelter of all these various kinds of yoga processes also. And if you think austerity, tapa can give you the ultimate shelter, then understand that Narayana gives shelter to austerity also. So if somebody wants to do austerity, Narayana gives that shelter. So, and if you think that knowledge, Gyan, can give you ultimate shelter, understand that knowledge is dependent on Narayana. He is the shelter of knowledge. Uh, and uh, Narayana Paragati. So if you think liberation gives the highest shelter, then understand that Narayana is the shelter also of liberation also, Gati. So Krishna... Uh, says no in the uh, ninth uh, chapter uh, 23rd shloka what does he say over there he says that ye ap, api ananya devata bhakta he says over there says that na chak maam karmani limpandi sorry that is 9.23 not 9.9 .9. I was just wondering what is this I removed the wrong shloka so he's saying ये अपि अन्य अन्य देवता भक्ता यजन्ते श्रद्धा श्रद्धयान विता ते अपि मामेव कौनते यजन्ति अविधि पूर्वकम सो ऑल द देवताज फ्रॉम द बॉडीली लिम्स ऑफ द लॉर्ड बिकॉज़ दे वर्शिप यू नो देम इंडिविजुअली इज एक्चुअली इनडायरेक्टली दे आर वर्शिपिंग होम दे आर वर्शिपिंग द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ओनली बट 
how are they worshiping they are worshiping a vidhi purvakam whimsically they are not uh, uh, they are not worshiping in a proper way they are worshiping in an improper way so now uh, when uh, you know brahma ji has answered this uh, these two questions yad rupam uh, yad adhisthanam uh, before answering the third question now brahma ji wants to be doubly sure that no uh, no one continues to think of him as the supreme lord see sometimes people what they think that oh i should be considered as supreme i should be considered as all in all and nobody should approach my boss people should think that i am only the boss so you know you put a person in an illusion by your talks by your behavior sometimes a uh, manager might think that i am only the boss or you go to any shop also okay the person who is working under the boss that little you know worker who is working under the boss he is thinking i am the boss only and then he might just say ha ha ye sari dukan to main hi chalata hu malik kya karta hai malik to ghar mein sote rehta hai the the malik what is he doing he is sleeping at home like especially if you go and see in uh, you know these goldsmith and all na, they 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 generally have you know such people who saying that you know malik sote rehte hain hum hi sab kaam karte rehte hain so brahma ji wants to be very doubly sure that no one you know thinks that uh, that he is the supreme lord so now in the text 17 to 20 he again is reemphasizing this point mentioning that uh, there is some basic difference between the supreme lord and myself and let me explain to you what that basic difference is uh, understanding uh, which you will never ever compare me with the supreme lord so because a uh, narada also might say you know to brahma that see if narayan is everything then uh, what do you do ab jab sab kuch hi narayana karte hai to what is your identity in this material world hai na so uh, in the next shloka he says that in the 17 shloka tapasya pi drushti rishya kutasthaya khilam atmana सृजय सृजा सृष्टो अहमी ईक्षवैवाचोदित या विघ्नेश प्रभु प्लीज रीड दी ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पट बोथ हरे कृष्ण ट्रांसलेशन इंस्पायर्ड बाय हिम ओनली आई डिस्कवर व्हाट इज ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड बाय हिम नारायण अंडर हिज विजन एज द ऑल परवेडिंग सुपर सोल and i also am created by him only purport even brahma the creator of the universe admits that he is not the actual creator but is simply inspired by the lord narayana and therefore creates under his superintendence those things already created by him the super soul of all living entities two identities of soul the super soul and the individual soul are admitted to be in the living entity even by the greatest authority of the universe the super soul is the supreme lord the personality of godhead whereas the individual soul is the eternal servitor of the lord the lord inspires the individual soul to create what is already created by the lord and by the good will of the lord a discoverer of something in the world is accredited as the discoverer it is said that columbus discovered the western hemisphere but actually the tract of land was not created by columbus the vast tract of land was already there by the omnipotency of the supreme lord and columbus by dint of his past service unto the lord was blessed with the credit of discovering america similarly no one can create anything without the sanction of the lord since everyone sees according to his ability this ability is also awarded by the lord according to one's willingness to render service unto the lord one must therefore be voluntarily willing to render service unto the lord and thus the lord will empower the doer in proportion to his surrender unto the lotus feet of the lord lord brahma is a great devotee of the lord therefore he has been empowered or inspired by the lord to create such a universe as the one manifested before us 
the lord also inspired arjuna to fight in the field of kurukshetra as follows tasmatam mutishta yashola basva jatva shatrun punkshva rajam samriddham mai mayai baite nihata purvam eva nimitta matram bhava savya sachin the battle of kurukshetra or any other battle at any place or at any time is made by the will of the lord for no one can arrange such a mass annihilation without the sanction of the lord the party of duryodhana insulted draupadi as a great devotee of krishna uh, a great devotee of krishna and she appealed to the lord as well as to all the silent observers of this unwarranted insult arjuna was then advised by the lord to fight and take credit otherwise the party of duryodhana would be killed anyway by the will of the lord so arjuna was advised just to become the agent and take the credit for killing great generals like bhishma and karna in the vedic writings such as the katha upanishad the lord is described as the sarvabhuta antaratma or the personality of godhead who resides in everyone's body and who directs everything for one who is a soul surrendered unto him those who are not surrendered souls are put under the care of the material and material nature brahmayan sarvabhutani yantra rudhani mayaya therefore they are allowed to do things on their own account and suffer the consequences themselves devotees like brahma and arjuna do not do anything on their own account but as fully surrendered souls they always await indications from the lord therefore they attempt to do something which appears very wonderful to ordinary vision one of the lord's names is urukrama or one whose actions are very wonderful and are beyond the imagination of the living being so the actions of his devotees sometimes appear very wonderful due to the direction of the lord beginning from brahma the topmost intelligent living entity within the universe down to the smallest ant every living entity's intelligence is overseen by the lord in his transcendental position as the witness of all actions the subtle presence of the lord is felt by the intelligent man who can study the psychic effects of thinking feeling and willing yeah so uh uh in this 17th shloka he's saying that uh, so if everything is narayan then what is your role brahma ji so brahma ji says that uh, see firstly you, you first thing you understand that i am created by him i only create what has already been created by him one may say that you may create what has already been created by him but at least that creation you do independently so he says no uh, he says that um, he says that uh, uh, tasya he says that uh, he gives me inspiration. Now, if you see the word to word meaning, being inspired by him over here. He gives me inspiration through his glance only. Can you imagine Krishna's mercy that he is giving inspiration only by his glance? So, whenever we take darshan of the Supreme Lord and when Krishna is looking at us, he's glancing. He's glancing us and he's inspiring us on a daily basis that you do something good for yourself and for the others also. When you go to take darshan in the temple or at your own home, even in the photograph. So, uh, he's saying that he gives me inspiration only through his glance. Because of that, I'm able to recreate uh, okay taking inspiration you are creating uh, uh, you know independently he says no ihasya srijam sujami aham that also he has created already and given me i only recreate it and even that recreation uh, he is uh, uh, he is the uh, drishta uh, drishtatu shritah so he is already he is only overseeing so he is overseeing as the witness 
so that I don't make any, uh, you know, mistakes or I don't miss, uh, miss anything in the creation or I don't make any uh, mistakes in the creation. So at every stage, his hands are there. So see, because the Supreme Lord is present in the heart of every living entity as the Paramatma. So he is seeing also and he is sanctioning also. Upadeshita and Anumanta. So uh, he is witnessing also and he is sanctioning also. So he is saying, therefore, I can't take any credit because ultimately he has created me. He has given me the inspiration to create. And what I have to do? I have to create what he has already created and given it to me. I am just recreating it, uh, sitting as the, you know, he's sitting as the Paramatma. He's carefully witnessing and watching. So therefore, what credit I can take for myself? Uh, like that Brahma ji is, you know, asking. And so therefore, he's saying that, he's telling that, uh, he's telling Narada that, see, don't call me Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, so this is actually Brahma ji's humility that he is not taking that credit uh, of uh, being the Supreme Lord and he is giving the full credit to the Supreme, uh, to Krishna. So now next he says that uh, how the Supreme Lord is taking the three gunas. Satvam rajastama iti nirgunasya gunastraya stiti sarga nirodheshu so, this is also a very nice shloka. This is the 18th shloka. Yeah, it's a very nice shloka. So, this also. Yeah, uh, Vishal Prabhu, please read. Hare Krishna Mataji. Translation. The Supreme Lord is pure spiritual form. Uh, transcendental to all material qualities. Yet for the sake of the creation of the material world and its maintenance and annihilation, he accepts through his external energy and material modes of nature called goodness, passion and ignorance. Purport. The Supreme Lord is the master of the external energy manifested by the three material modes, namely goodness, passion and ignorance. And as master of this energy, he is ever unaffected by the influence of such bewildering energy. The living entities the jivas, however, are affected by or susceptible to being influenced by such modes of material nature. That is the difference between the Lord and the living entities. The living entities are subjected by those qualities, although originally the living entities are qualitatively one with the Lord. In other words, the material modes of nature being products of the energy of the Lord are certainly connected with the Lord. But the connection is just like that between the master and the servants. The Supreme Lord is the controller of the material energy, whereas the living entities who are entangled with uh, entangled in the material world are neither masters nor controllers. Rather, they become subordinate, subordinate to or controlled by such energy. Fact, factually, the Lord is eternally manifested by his eternal potency or spiritual energy, just like the sun and its rays in the, in the clear sky. But at times, he creates the material energy as the sun creates the cloud in the sky, in the clear sky. As the sun is ever increasingly unaffected by a spot of cloud, so also the, uh, the unlimited Lord is affected by the spot of, spot of material energy manifested at times in the unlimited span of the Lord's rays of Brahma Jyoti. Hare Krishna. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. So, uh, very nice, you know, that... Uh, He's the uh, so Krishna is the master of not only the external energy, he is the master of even the internal energy. So, in the material world, um, the external energy works. So, she is called Durga or Maya. Okay, and in the spiritual world, then uh, who is working? Then this is uh, Yoga Maya. Here it is Mahamaya in the material world and in the spiritual world it is Yoga Maya. So in the spiritual world, the Yoga Maya, what is her task or what is her uh, you know, duty? 
she takes jivatmas or living entities more closer to krishna and over here uh, in the material world the mahamaya she takes living entities away from krishna that is the difference between mahamaya and yogamaya and over there yogamaya what she does is her prime duty is to arrange uh, you know uh, to make all the arrangements for the radha krishna pastimes to happen so say for example if uh, uh, radha and krishna were to were to meet on uh, a hill so then over there immediately you know yog maya will go ahead and uh, she will send all her parrots so these all parrots they are actually the messengers so pehle hi ja ke na wo sare uh, you know wo dekh ke aayenge ki everything is right or not wo moena karke aayenge wo jagah ka kyunki everything is perfect for this past time to happen you know so for example if a king comes what happens all the ministers and all the make sure the roads are clean and this is clean so that particular task is happening even by, way before the king arrives maybe one day two days seven days over here at least on this earth planet but over there you know because there is ashta prahariya leela over there going on so um, uh, so then uh, uh, the parrots go and see okay everything is perfect now we can go so then yoga maya and all the other sakhis manjaris gopis they will actually go ahead with all their you know instruments and all their paraphernalia and all uh, the chhappan bhog and all they will go and prepare over there they will decorate that particular place they will make some comfort level where radha krishna have to actually uh, reunite again so these pastimes all are, or if some you know if they have to have a swing pastime under some tree so then the swing is actually you know immediately tied that swing is nicely decorated all that comfort is given then there is chhappan bhog also then all these gopis with nice instruments sitar dholak harmonium and all other musical instruments and when they are doing that past time you know there is nice light music going on uh, behind and then there is offering of chhappan bhoga and uh, to, to to the lord so the lord is equally glancing at the gopis also and manjaris also and radharani also and satisfying everybody here also everybody is being satisfied that oh radha and krishna are enjoying because for them you no know, their enjoyment is gaun gaun means secondary they are uh, they are this is that they both should enjoy radha and krishna both should equally enjoy but krishna is uh, not a not a god who will just uh, you know take take uh, you know happiness but he knows how to doubly give happiness to the other living entities also so he is a god of gratitude he will always have gratitude for his living entities or his children or uh, the jivatmas and he will equally reciprocate now this is about yog maya but over here mahamaya so over here she is you no know, uh, is manifested by the three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance and as the master of the energy he is ever unaffected by the influence of such so the supreme lord is not affected by these three modes and that is why he is called as nirguna no mean nirgun means aisa nahi ki unke paas koi gun hi nahi hai nahi nirgun means he is above the influence of the three modes of material nature and that is why uh, these jivas they are always influenced under the three modes of material nature and that is the difference between the supreme lord and the jivatma so uh if you see the supreme lord is definitely the control of the material energy and all these uh, jivatmas that are there are not the controller they are being controlled and that is why they are subordinate so anybody who is controlling somebody is being controlled so he is he is actually subordinate the boss uh, is controlling his worker so the worker is the subordinate and the because the boss is the controller then he becomes the uh you know uh, supreme person for that particular person so so then factually the lord is eternally manifested by his uh internal potency or spiritual energy is just like the sun and its rays in the clear sky but at times he creates a material energy as the sun creates a cloud in the clear sky 
So somebody might think that how can the sun create a cloud in the clear sky? That is the that is that mechanism which even I absolutely really don't know. So as the sun is ever increasing unaffected by a spot of cloud, so also the unlimited load is unaffected by the spot of material energy manifested at times in the unlimited span of Lord's rays of Brahma Jyoti. So the Brahma Jyoti is nothing but the effulgence of the Lord. Bhagwan se hi wo tej nikla hua hai. You know, that effulgence is coming out from the Lord only, but we cannot see the Lord standing behind the Lord. So Priyanka has some question. Let me just answer this question. She's saying that, so Ma Mataji, so Yoga Maya works both in the spiritual world and the material world at the same time. Yes, she can work for the devotees. Yes, for pure devotees, she really works. Uh, and if you see when Krishna had come down, okay, in Vapar Yuga, and Krishna was there, so this pastime that happened, Damodar Leela that happened, so what was that actually pastime? That pastime was completely organized by Yoga Maya only. Others imagine how can Krishna, who's fear personified, get uh, uh, get fearful of Mother Yashoda? But that time, because of the achinte shakti of Krishna, achinte means inconceivable. That uh, Shri Vishwana Chakrati Thakur also says in the commentary. He says that. At that point of time, if Krishna knew I am God, then Krishna would have not credited. He would have said, ha ha, I am God. Why should I, you know, this, get afraid of my mother? But no, at that point of time, Krishna's supremacy also was covered by Yoga Maya. So Krishna is also thinking that I am a child of Mother Yashoda. And Mother Yashoda is really coming with a stick. And he really got scared and he got really fearful about Mother Yashoda. So he's running, running, running for his life. Then he's crying also. And all that kajal from his eyes is dropping down. And he's running. Your mother Yashoda also. There is yoga maya potency of mother Yashoda also. That my child has become very naughty nowadays. He really needs to be, you know, disciplined a lot. I'm getting a lot of complaints from the neighbors. So then mother Yashoda is, you know, running, running, running. And, you know, there's a nice description that how... Her, uh, you know, the flowers from her uh, uh, neck are falling down. And those flowers are also actually because they are having consciousness. They are also having a conversation that, no, no, we don't want to fall down uh, because uh, uh, I think, sorry, she said that they want to fall down because they want to be under the lotus feet of Mother Yashoda. And they are also so scared that, oh, now Krishna is really going to have a whack from Mother Yashoda, Mother Yashoda is also, this whole pastime was arranged by Yoga Maya Potency. And this whole pastime is actually a, a very inconceivable pastime because Shri Vishwana Chakri Thakur also says that if Krishna knew that he is God or he is supreme, then that whole pastime, ka jo, usko bolte na, maza, ya, sorry, not maza, maza is for material people. We say anand. So that Anand hai jo wo anand ka luft nahi utha paate. So that is why Yoga Maya covers. She covers Krishna's also supremacy and uh, she does not allow Krishna to think that he is supreme. And really Krishna is running for his life. So this is the answer, Mataji. Okay. So yes, uh, for devotees also, uh, Yoga Maya works. Sometimes devotees also get bewildered. Pure devotees also get bewildered. So, uh, I'm not remembering a very specific example from uh, the Shastras, but yes, pure devotees also do get bewildered. If I remember how pure devotees get bewildered, anybody knows how the pure devotees also can get bewildered? Maybe from the Bhagavatam or from the any Purana story. Okay, I'll find out and I'll tell you all tomorrow. Okay, we'll go to the next 19th shloka. Karya karana kartritve dravya jnana kriyashraya bandhanti nityada mukta mayi nam purusham guna. Again, this is also a nice shloka. 
Brinda beta, please read this uh, shloka. Translation and purport both. Translation. These three modes of material nature being further manifested as matter, knowledge and activities put the eternally transcendental living entity under conditions of cause and effect and make them make him responsible for such activities. Purport. Because they are between the internal and external potencies, the eternally transcendental living entities are called the marginal potency of the Lord. Factually, the living entities are not meant to be so conditioned by material energy, but due to their being affected by the false sense of lording it over the material energy, they come under the influence of such potency and thus become conditioned by the three modes of material nature. This external energy of the Lord covers up the pure knowledge of the living entities eternally existing with him. But the covering is so constant that it appears that the conditioned soul is so eternally ignorant. Such is the wonderful action of Maya, or external energy manifested as if materially produced. By the covering of power of the material energy, the material scientist cannot look beyond the material causes, but factually behind the material manifestation, there are adhibhuta, adhyatma, and adhideva actions which the conditioned soul in the mode of ignorance cannot see. The adhibhuta manifestation entails repetitions of births and death with old age and disease. The adha, adhyam, atma manifestation conditions the spirit soul and the Adi Deva manifestation is the controlling system. These are the material manifestations of cause and effect of and the sense of responsibility of the conditioned actors. They are, after all, manifestations of the conditioned state, and the human being's freedom from such a conditioned state is the highest perfectional attainment. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sayesha Bhavalinga Bhavalinga Strivir Ether Adhokshaja Swalakshita Gatir Brahman Sarvesham Mama Chash Mama Cheshwara Jagdish Prabhu, please read the translation and purport both. Hare Krishna Mataji. Translation O Brahman Narada, the Superseer, the transcendent Lord, is beyond the perception of the material senses of the living entities because of the above mentioned three modes of nature, but he is the controller of everyone, including me. Purport. In the Bhagavad Gita 7 24 25, the Lord has declared very clearly that the impersonalist who gives more importance to the transcendental rays of the Lord as Brahm Jyoti and who concludes that the absolute truth is ultimately impersonal and only manifests a form at a time of necessity is less intelligent than the personalist. However much the impersonalist may be engaged in studying the Vedanta, the fact is that such impersonalists are covered by the above mentioned three modes of material nature. Therefore, they are unable to approach the transcendental personality of the Lord. The Lord is not the Lord is not approachable by everyone because he is curtained by his Yogmaya potency, but one should not wrongly conclude that the Lord was formerly unmanifested and has now manifested himself in the human form. This misconception of the formlessness of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is due to the Yogmaya curtain of the Lord and can be removed only by the Supreme Will as soon as the conditioned soul surrenders unto Him. The devotees of the Lord who are transcendental to the above mentioned three modes of material nature can see the all blissful transcendental form of the Lord with their vision of love in the attitude of pure devotional service. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. So, uh, in this 19th shloka and the 20th shloka, because 19th shloka is saying that uh, 
these gunas only are binding this jiva those three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance so these gunas are further manifesting as matter knowledge and activity dravya jnana and kriya and they put this condition soul soul under this particular bondage and in this 20th shloka he is saying that why the jiva cannot see the lord because uh, of this covering of these three gunas only the moment that covering is removed that curtain is removed then immediately they can see the supreme lord face to face and that is why uh, they have to rise beyond the three gunas krishna also in the bhagavad gita says arjuna you rise beyond the three gunas if you rise beyond the three gunas then you will not be affected by happiness and distress or by heat or by cold or by winter or by summer you will not be affected at all and that is why living entity should rise beyond these three modes of material nature to the shuddha sattva level where uh, uh, the, we are completely purified of all the contaminations of our heart and uh, we can uh, serve the supreme lord with a selfless uh, uh, attitude uh, towards the lord so uh, that is why uh, bhagavatam bhagavad gita chanting nine types of devotional services what are all these for these are these are meant only to uh, help us transcend the three modes of material nature and bring us to that platform of shuddha sattva level and even above the shuddha sattva level then uh, you have uh, prema pre above the prema also you have uh, mahabhav and mahabhav ke upar bhi madanakya bhav modanakya bhav so all these are there all these bhavas are there with uh, the gopis and that bhava can be experienced only in the spiritual world so dear devotees uh, uh, tomorrow i'll be taking class because i'm not going for my seva tomorrow so we will be continuing maybe 5 10 minutes here and there because i'm taking an online kids summer camp and there are almost i think 50 60 children on that so uh, the class is only for one hour but sometimes it extends because half the time i have to keep on keep on telling the children to keep quiet so uh, we will log in at maybe 9 20 9 25 but you all keep on logged in and i'll immediately post a message also that i have logged in okay so thank you so much dear devotees shila prabhu pad ki jai gaur bhakt vrind ki jai hare krishna hare krishna mata ji hare krishna mata ji hare krishna